Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Yana, this is The Scented. We talk about fragrances. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to choose your signature scent, how to find that special scent for you that you're known by. And I'll share a few of my signature scents. I wish I could have one signature scent, but seeing as how the life of a fragrance reviewer is. I have over 300 fragrances, so I have a signature lineup. So I'll share my signature lineup with you guys. These are the fragrances that I'm known for, and I'll also suggest ways of how you guys can find your signature scent. So if that sounds interesting to you, then just keep on watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a video. Before I get into sharing my signature scents, let's define what is a signature scent. I would say that a signature scent is a, a scent that you wear often, so it has to be a fragrance that you don't get tired of. It doesn't ever annoy you, you never get sick of it. It's a fragrance that you feel comfortable in and you can wear day in and day out. And for that reason, it's a fragrance that you're known for because you end up wearing it often, so people learn to recognize that fragrance on you and it becomes a fragrance you're known for. So it slowly molds into a signature scent for you. and it has to be versatile. So in order for it to be comfortable, for you to be able to wear it, to vibe with it, for people to recognize you, it has to be quite versatile. So there's a lot of fragrances that are very beautiful fragrances that don't have a broad opportunity for you to wear them. For example, Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford, which I absolutely love, is a fragrance that I feel would be a very challenging signature scent. It is quite heavy. It is mostly for cooler weather. It would be difficult to not get tired of it because it has such a presence. It is so bold. It, it, it wouldn't really work as a signature scent unless that's your winter signature scent, but I digress. Really what I'm saying is your signature scent has to be one that resonates with you in some way. So it's very important that that scent means something to you. It's like you guys vibe. So you don't get sick of it, you wear it often, you're known for it, it's a versatile scent, and you and that fragrance are puzzle pieces that just fit. And there's fragrances that will be like that. One fragrance like that for me is Mugler's Alien. So Mugler's Alien I know isn't the most versatile fragrance, but it's very special to me. It's one that I love since it came out, not right away. I like was very intrigued by it. I was very captivated. I wanted to keep smelling it. And it really, really grew on me from the moment that it came out. And I was very young at that time, so I was a little bit intimidated by it, but always captivated. So I do wear it very often. I wear the flankers as well. So this scent profile, people recognize on me and I'm known for it. It's one of my signature scents, albeit more so in the cooler weather. I will wear this sometimes on summer nights when it's a little bit cooler, a little bit breezier. I will go lighter on the sprays or I'll wear a flanker like Alien Eau Sublime. I really like that one. Of all the flankers, I find Alien Eau Sublime really, really nice. And so yeah, I alternate between the two, but it's a scent profile that's very easy to recognize and I'm known for this one. Alien is for me more of a cooler weather scent though. So that one maybe if I had to choose one signature scent wouldn't be it because I do tend to reach for it more in the cooler weather. I don't think I would be able to wear it across all seasons, but the next fragrance is extremely versatile and it is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. And this fragrance I've had for a long time. So it's fair to say that even though I really love Chanel Coco Noir, that one's a newer addition to my fragrance collection. This one I've had for a very long time. I've worn it to work. I've worn it to family events, with friends, to brunches, to all sorts of events. It's a favorite. It's a crowd pleaser. Everybody really enjoys the scent. It's a really huge compliment getter for me. And I think that it's very easy wearing. One of the more easy wearing Chanel's in the square bottles. It's like so signature scent worthy. It's this beautiful citrusy, rosy patchouli scent that appeals to people that don't like citruses, that don't like rose, and that don't like patchouli. Somehow this blend is just so classy and effortless and elegant, like very effortlessly elegant. 
For me, when I don't know what to wear, and it's a day that I'm feeling more put together, I reach for Coco Mademoiselle, so this is one that is definitely one of my most worn signature scents, as you guys can see by the bottle. So both of the fragrances that I just mentioned, Alien from Mubler and Chanel Coco Mademoiselle, believe it or not, I also didn't fall in love with Coco Mademoiselle at first sniff. These fragrances intrigued me, but I had to spend some time with them to really get them. And the fragrances that will resonate with you the most, that you'll really fall in love with, oftentimes are not the ones that you love at first sniff. You might like it, you might be interested by it, but it really takes time for it to really grow on you and to become a fragrance that is your signature scent. It's kind of like when you have your song, like it's rare that like you hear it once and you're like, oh, this is my song. Usually there's some attachment, there's some like fond associations that make it your song. It's very much a similar situation with a signature scent. For it to be your fragrance, you have to spend some time with it for you to build a connection with it. So that's Alien and um, Coco Mademoiselle. For me, those are the two signature scents that I have that I've probably had in my collection the longest, that I've worn the longest, and that I will continue to wear for many, many years to come. Like I don't see these fragrances leaving my collection anytime soon, if ever. The next fragrances I'm gonna mention are ones that I more so recently discovered. So I guess I'm going in order of oldest to newest signature scents or like signature scent lineup. So the next fragrance is from Jo Malone and it's Wood Sage and Sea Salt, but I don't actually have a full bottle of it because since it has very poor longevity, I opt for the fragrance oil and this one is from the fragrance shop. This smells unbelievable and I will only use the fragrance oil. I'm not ashamed to use fragrance oils when they perform better and smell the same. And this is like a more concentrated, like everything that I love in wood sage and sea salt times five longevity, like the actual scent itself. And I absolutely love it. And like little bits of this last me throughout the whole day. And it's absolutely beautiful. I also like to layer it with the body oil and the lotion. This is not sponsored by the way at all. I just happened to, to discover the fragrance oil of Woods Sage and Sea Salt and after being disappointed with the fragrance itself and the very poor longevity, I basically said I refuse to buy a full bottle of it unless it magically improves its longevity because guys, I've tried everything. I've tried layering it with its own body lotion. I've tried all of the tips and tricks of making a fragrance last longer and it works here and there but it's just too much effort when i can just buy this fragrance oil which by the way is actually not even cheap this is like 70 bucks for this little bottle but i've had it for probably about a year and a half now maybe about two years and i only need a little bit so wood sage and sea salt that scent is one of my signature scents and that one i actually did fall in love with at first sniff and then fell right out of love when I couldn't smell it on myself and I couldn't smell it at all. That brings me to the next point of choosing your signature scent. Sometimes a fragrance really doesn't last, like wood sage and sea salt, and sometimes you may not smell it on yourself. So you kind of have to rely on the comments of others. You have to ask other people if they can smell it on you because if you can't smell it on yourself, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just means that your nose got used to the fragrance, maybe you have nose fatigue, maybe you're just really used to the fragrance. And I've had lots of fragrances in my past that I sprayed so much because your nose gets used to it. You spray more and more and more and you kind of don't really smell it. And maybe it's nose fatigue. Maybe it's just the fact that there's no clash. You and the fragrance, you're one and it works. And as long as other people can smell it on you, Unless you really, really want to smell the fragrance on yourself, in which case I would suggest to spray it on clothing because then you will pick it up more so than on your own skin chemistry. But it not being like available to your receptors isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means you guys vibe. Have you ever noticed that it's the worst fragrances that seem to last the longest. Like the fragrances that you dislike the most just will never leave your skin. Like, have you had that experience? Because for me, it happens a lot so just comment down below and let me know which fragrance if you've had that experience was like a bad fragrance that you just couldn't like remove 
no matter how much you scrubbed it still seemed to kind of be there like for me it was tom ford black orchid i'm like oh my god this fragrance lasts forever and it's not even a bad scent it's just that something about it was giving me a really massive headache and i just i just can't with that scent and no matter how much I scrubbed, it wouldn't leave. The way that I perceive it is there's something in that fragrance that clashes with whatever your receptors, your skin chemistry, the way your mind perceives the fragrance, there's a clash. And you guys, you guys can't be friends. You just can't, you don't, you don't get along. But a fragrance that you can't smell on yourself is like an effortless friendship that like is a friend that you can hang out with and you guys never get tired of each other and it's just, it's easy all the time and sometimes you don't even realize they're there. Like it's just so effortless. That's what a signature scent should feel like. So not being able to smell it on yourself, not a bad thing. And a fragrance that I often don't smell on myself but is definitely one of my signature scents is from Guerlain and this is La Petite Robe Noire Eau Fraiche and I was really kind of hesitant to put this in my signature scents because I don't necessarily think that this is a signature scent, it's just a dumb reach for me that I wear all the time around the house and it's it's effortless but for that reason this is like a really easy friend to hang out with like super chill you just you just get along and because I wear it so much I am known for like if I'm being honest with myself I do wear this a lot to work I wear this a lot around people and I believe that this is a scent that I'm known for because of how much I wear it around people and I do always get comments when I get a hug like oh you smell so nice and it's just a fresh clean effortless scent that isn't a typical freshie it has a really nice soft pistachio note it's the typical La Petite Robe Noire DNA but less sweet more fresh and it's just it's a very uplifting comfortable scent so to the point of it being effortless maybe you don't smell it on yourself this fragrance would be that for me and i already have a massive backup bottle because this one's almost out so this one is one of my signature scents and my next signature scent is ysl manifesto so it's between manifesto and manifesto l'eclat i wear them both interchangeably but I, I decided to go with this one because I think I wear it more often and this one really like when I put it on it makes me feel some type of way like it makes me feel warm and cozy and happy and cuddly and that's what a signature scent should do for you like it needs to make you feel a certain way it needs to do something for you make you feel happy make you feel cozy make you feel confident like for you to choose it as your signature scent and for it not to become boring and you to want to keep coming back to it it needs to do something for you so this offers me this like cozy comfort it feels very welcoming and it feels like a hug when i wear it and i absolutely love it it's a fragrance that i wear very often in the evenings it's a fragrance that i wear across all seasons this one and the l'eclat l'eclat i kind of go for more in the warmer weather but this one as well like this one is just so versatile it's so easy for me to wear it's a it's my favorite favorite vanilla of all time it's a greenish vanilla and not leafy green not like a grassy green it has a certain like tea element to it and almost like a little bit of black currant, it's, it's beautiful. It's different and it's not too heavy, which for me is important. It's hard for me to have a heavy signature scent. I like an, a heavy oriental on the occasion, but for me personally, I find it difficult to make that my daily uh, signature scent. That's just me. My next signature scent out of my lineup is Mont Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDT and I know some of you guys disagree and you don't find this the best Mont Guerlain but for me this one just vibes with my skin chemistry. I find it light and airy enough to wear in the spring and in the summer I find the original not really like wearable in the hot hot weather only because it does give me a little bit of a headache but this one no problem absolutely no problem i can wear it all season and this is my like romantic signature scent this is my my date kind of like intimate date night sort of signature scent this is the one that i wear most often this is very well loved and I know myself to wear this in those situations. It makes me feel very beautiful. I've said it before, I wear this and I feel like I'm just the most beautiful woman in the world. That's just how this fragrance makes me feel and that's how your signature scent should make you feel. It needs to make you feel a certain type of way. 
and otherwise you're gonna maybe you're gonna get tired of it if you if it gives you a certain boost of confidence or like attractiveness or something like it must do something for you that's basically what i'm saying that's a huge factor in choosing your signature scent now on the same point of it doing something for you chanel number no. five lo i mentioned i wear a lot to work this one is more of like a spring summer i don't really wear this in the winter i do wear this more in the spring summer and i often wear this to work this one makes me feel very confident makes me feel very boss lady and it kind of soothes me there's a beautiful citrus note in here that honestly kind of takes the edge off and takes the stress away and I just feel like I can take on the most challenging day when I wear this fragrance. It's a very effortless, clean, crisp, very boss lady fragrance and it makes me feel productive, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel confident, it gives me like a zingy boost of energy and I guess I'm known for this one as well at the office because I wear it quite often as you guys can see. Yeah, so this is kind of like my business casual signature scent and I guess you know what I don't want to say it's a signature scent because I've only had it for about a year but the next one is YSL Libre and Libre Intense I do wear these ones very often I find them very easy very versatile this one more so for the evening and this one more so kind of for the day I love the way that this smells I love the dry down this makes me feel really really good and I can see this climbing up over a period of time to be one of my signature scents. I don't know that it is yet, so it's kind of more of like a limbo honorable mention, but it has potential. It has real potential. So another important thing to consider when you guys are choosing your signature scent is a physical response. Like physical response to fragrance is very important. If it makes you feel like dizzy or lightheaded or tired or headachey um, or like your heart racing like, there was one fragrance that i tried that i really liked how it smelled but i don't know why it gave me like a really weird physical response and made me feel like anxious and uncomfortable and like almost a little bit nauseated so even though i liked the scent i had a weird physical response so that won't work that just won't do and that's something that you guys need to pay attention to when you wear your fragrance like what's your physical response and that'll kind of dictate whether or not it can be a signature scent for you and that was the case for me and Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. The first time that I had tried it and why I didn't really like it was because I had tried it in my early teens and it gave me a headache. Like it really gave me a headache and I just, I don't know, it just, I couldn't. But that's because I had a baby nose. So as time went on, I came back to it, I tried it and I fell in love with it eventually and it's now one of my signature scents. So a key point is as your nose develops, come back to the fragrance and maybe you won't have that physical response. Like don't write it off just because maybe you didn't, like it didn't make you feel good once. Give it a chance later on and see how you feel about it. Maybe years down the line, like me with Coco Mademoiselle, like who would have, who would have thunk it that 15 years later, it's a signature scent of mine, but it happens. And choosing a signature scent will take time. Like it's a fragrance that stands the test of time and proves itself to you. And it's, it's going to take time to really establish it. Like it's, almost impossible to pick up one fragrance, smell it, be like, I like it, this is gonna be the one for me forever. Like, that just doesn't happen. You need to wear it, you need to play with it, you need to experience it and see how it makes you feel and see how it scores basically on all the points that I mentioned on how to pick your signature scent. And if, if it's vibing with you, then that's perfect, but it needs to be versatile, it needs to not give you a negative physical reaction. It needs to make you feel some type of positive way. It needs to be a scent that you don't get tired of, that you don't get sick of, and you can wear anywhere, anytime so that you're known for that scent. And the last thing is you don't need to just have one. You can have multiple signature scents. So I think that it's a misconception that, um, a woman needs to be known for one scent. Oh, you choose your one and this is your one and everybody knows you for this one. You can do that if you want, you can. Like that's totally a matter of choice. If you wanna have 10 signature scents, you can have 10 signature scents because if those are signature scents that you wear often, you're gonna be known for them. In different scenarios, you're gonna be known for them. As long as they're ones that resonate with you and do something for you, then it's your signature scent 
and your signature scents kind of become a part of you like kind of a part of your identity in a way I guess this is like such a fragrance fanatic thing to say and when I reach for a signature scent of mine like I really wear it and I choose it based on the day that I'm expecting to have a certain situation a certain way that I want to feel like that fragrance and I were kind of like we're one identity and we're doing something together like I won't necessarily wear a signature scent on some you know meaningless day when I'm just bumming around the house maybe I will maybe not but I do tend to gravitate to the signature scents on days that matter and so there's there's a lot of scent memories built around the signature scents and that happens over time like for example Victoria's Secret Love as much as I wear it out of the shower at home and maybe it's one of my most worn fragrances around the house it is by no means a signature scent and I'm not known for that fragrance because I basically wear it alone at home and like when I sleep I like it it's fresh but it's not a signature scent and there's a lot of other most worn fragrances in my collection that I wouldn't really qualify as a signature scent maybe they were most worn throughout the year but in my lifetime like these definitely are my signature scents also to that point I wouldn't say that the signature scents are my most favorite fragrances because there are fragrances that I smell and like they really wow me and there are fragrances that like I'm really taken by but they're just they're not my signature scent for one reason or another maybe they're just too bold maybe they're too striking and I can't wear them every day they're my favorite like I'll do a separate video on my favorite favorite fragrances and how they smell but they somehow just don't become signature scents so I would argue that those are two very different things your signature scents may not necessarily be your most favorite scents they might be like if you want to only choose one signature scent it may be your most favorite fragrance ever but that's not how I can live my life I need many many fragrances so I need a signature scent lineup so I guess that's just kind of how I rationalize and divide them up so let me know if you guys agree or disagree with that let me know what your signature scent or scents are please comment down below and I hope this video was helpful for you guys to figure out how to choose your signature scent if you're working on that if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you guys haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye